All right, here we are spectating Audic and his duo Schwartz. Now we can already see, we can already see a lack of teamwork. Look at this. Bro, Audic, if you were my teammate, I would slap the living shit out of you. Bro, you're just gonna watch your teammate die instead of going down there trying to save him. So what do you do? It's pretty self-explanatory, right? Get off the damn radar dish and go help your squad mate out. What do you... Oh my God, dude, this is, it's incredible, bro. Like, YouTube, do you want to get better at Warzone? Are you tired of having less than 20 or 100 wins? Have you been playing for over a year, yet you somehow cannot drop more than three, four, or even five kills a match? Then buckle up and take this journey with me and let me teach you guys on basic things you need to avoid in order to improve. This game is not as complicated as people think it is. You can literally improve your gameplay just by following some simple rules. And hopefully through this one video, we can touch on a lot of those rules. And if we don't, we have over 300 how-to videos to help you, the player, improve. I don't say this for my health. I say this to help other players have more fun in Warzone because this game can be stressful. But if you like this video and you find anything in this video interesting, entertaining, whatnot, drop a like, subscribe with your notifications on. And without any further ado, let's dive into this. Now, those of you who are trying to improve, which should be a lot of us, this game has been out for over a year. And throughout all of our spectating, we still see the same mistakes being made over and over and over again. And honestly, it's to the point where I'm just getting irritated now. And I may be a little emotional, but guys, look, this game has been out so long, most of these tips need to be common sense at this point or something you're practicing. If you haven't been practicing it, it's either A, because you didn't know, or B, you just don't care. So hopefully you guys can listen to this advice, take it for what it's worth, and improve. I do have solos, duos, trios, and quad videos out there, so make sure you guys pay attention to those for whatever mode you enjoy playing. Now, here we are, spectating Turner. And unfortunately, he is down two men. One is in the Gulag. He'll probably lose. Um, and right now, we're going for the Scavenger. So guys, if, you're, if you've got Scavengers, you have teammates down waiting to redeploy, make sure you redeploy them first and then get the Scavengers so y'all can up your bank account. Now, with saying that, I don't know what Turner's doing right now. Again, we got shit we need to do. We need to load out. We need to buy our teammate back. Um, Han did win his gulag, so let's go ahead and get this started. Don't know why we're going up to the rooftop. We need to be make, making our way to the buy station. But since we're here, let's go ahead and jump off and get our asses to the buy station so we can do what we need to do by our loadout. Now, guys, simple rule of thumb. Oh, yeah, he's dead. <laughs> Maybe not. Simple rule of thumb. You want to try to make it a point. <laughs> go help your teammate, film. Yo, it's a shotgun. That's not a sniper. Tip number one right gun for the right fight again you might think to yourself savage this is basic duh duh nothing this dude's level 250 trying to snipe people with a shotgun i want to hear that duh what is going on here so now we're so now we went from having three teammates to one again the objective tip number two things i want you guys to focus on is trying to get your load out before there's less than 100 enemies on the map we had we had great hope we had more than enough to get our teammate back and get a loadout, and we had three of our squad mates. All we had to do was stop wasting our time, not go to the rooftop like a dum dum. Go to the buy station, get your shit. And look, if there is a guy at buy station, that's okay. Go to another one if you don't want to fight him. The moment he saw that team there, he should have pinged it, and they all should have dove out somewhere else. You got a buy station here. You got a buy station here. You got a buy station here. You got a buy station everywhere. Verdansk is like the Oprah Winfrey of freaking buy stations. So guys, please. Please stop wasting your time doing stupid shit, looting things that don't need to be looted. Stay focused on the task at hand, take care of it, and get it done. Now, here we are in a solo. We got a teammate ping, and he wants to be bought back. Let's see what he ends up doing. He's This guy seems a little competent. He seems to be a mouse and keyboard player, judging by his, <laughs> judging by his movement. He seems a little laggy, too. Again, again, what a, no. <laughs> And this is what I was afraid of. This is what I'm afraid of right here. We have the most wanted bounty on us, fam. If you want to go to the rooftop, I'm still not for it, but that's, that's not a bad play. I'd rather you get in a vehicle and drive away from downtown because if you get pushed by a squad on the rooftop, you're going to get destroyed. So the reason why I was all pissed off about him going up the zip line again is because he needed to get to the vehicle, right? And now he looks to be going to a buy station. I don't know what he's doing. He's still looting. He's still looting for that money. Not a bad idea if you want to loot for money, get your teammate back, but don't pick up the most wanted bounty. Your team just got obliterated, all right? They just got obliterated. There's a lot of people downtown, a lot of hungry people that want that ass, and they're going to come get it. So, guys, look, if you want to play passive, 
and not have a most wanted bounty, get cash and do shit like this. It will be time consuming. It will put you behind the match. It's not going to be a good vibe. If you want to go for most wanted, go for the vehicle. Stop wasting your time looting and shit like that. You don't need money because you're getting most wanted, right? Once your teammates come back, y'all get some basic bitch ground weapons. Y'all fight together and then you get money. I can't tell if he's having a seizure on his on his mouse or not. A lot of a lot of jiggles for no reason. All right, but now this is the point where you drive the vehicle. We have a most wanted bounty. We need to play passive. This is one of those moments, aggression, no, stop. You got a most wanted bounty, you're down three teammates, you need to play passive. Do not drive next to buy stations or main compounds. Play the outskirts, go to where people are not at. So many times we spectate people. Like I said, we've been spectating, we've been spectating randoms and giving tips and tricks since day one of Warzone over a year and two months of this shit and we still see the same thing over and over all you gotta do is stay alive for another 46 seconds he risked way too much driving through that buy station i knew there was people there that's why i said it it's a buy station early game of course there's people there not to mention the circle's closing in that's what they're gonna be rotating to another situation where we have 30 seconds left and we're we're really full sending i don't know what what you're doing bro you're not impressing anyone i'm sorry i i really don't want to be a dick but i'm heated right now I'm gonna laugh so hard if he dies with a few seconds remaining. But look, now we're at the point where we're probably gonna get our teammates back and we're going for some extra money for, for our loadout. I can vibe with that. Or maybe we're not. Remember, we do need our loadout. He might go around to the other buildings, but I don't like the fact that we're playing the outside. We run way too much of a risk getting sniped. We're in a vulnerable position. We're we're at we're not in a position right now to be playing ballsy. Oh, let's just go over here. Not a bad idea leaving that buy station to come here to get our loadout. I'm fine with that. I can vibe with that. Um, but why didn't we just make our way here first? Why did we stop at TV station and run the risk of getting shot from the helicopter we clearly had saw because we pinged it? It's just a lot of the decisions Turner's making, or no, I'm sorry, not Turner, Hawn. A lot of decisions that Hawn was making was just very questionable and he ran too many risks to get shot. We now have a full squad with a loadout in our hand and we're ready to go. We're combining our money. Let's see what they end up getting. Han got a self-res. Now, this is personal preference, but just hear me out. Now, normally I don't vibe with self-reses until I lose my gulag. Once I lose my gulag and I know I can't come back on my own, um, I'll go ahead and get a selfie. Now, unfortunately, they all lost their gulag, bro. You were, I play on mouse and keyboard and my movement's pretty, pretty nutty, but this dude is just doing way too much. <laughs> way too much. <laughs> We got two teammates down are bleeding out. The sniper on the hill has got us suppressed really well. We need to go ahead and make our way to him. Fortunately, we're able to. Now, during this, during this push, Turner should have been suppressing the enemy. Green right here was watching us run across instead of shooting at the enemies to suppress fire. If you're playing a team-based game mode, duos, trios, quads, you better suppress fire if your teammate's going out in the open to do some cool shit like reses, flanks, whatever the situation. Team-based game. You don't need to watch what your teammate's doing. That's what the minimap's for. You can see what he's doing based off his little arrow. Pay attention to the enemy. Still, Green's doing his own shit. Now, here we are finally using the vehicle with the trophy to push into the enemies. Not a huge fan of that. Could be a 1v4 situation. I'm not pretty opti I'm not that optimistic in thinking that this guy could actually outplay a solo squad. Just, just judging by the decisions we've seen so far. Which leads me to tip number three. Know your limits. I want everyone to get to the point and the position where they can solo squad. That's the purpose of this. My competitive days are over. I'm old, I'm washed up, and I'm just tired of competing. So basically with saying that, I want everyone to have fun and get better at the game. You can get to that point where you're solo squatting, but don't just do some crazy shit and put yourself in a 1v4 position just trying to be a badass. Work on the fundamentals, work on the tactics, work on your aim accuracy, work on your settings with your ADS sensitivity, things like that. Work on the basics. Trying too much will hinder your performance in the long run. It'll take you longer to get better at the game than it will if you just start from the ground up. It's like building a house and putting the roof on first. Doesn't make any damn sense. You gotta build the walls, right? But example number two, Canal is out here by himself doing God knows what. Nope. Oh my God, dude. Look how many pings there aren't right now. We have one ping all the way at TV station. Green and uh, orange both died and they never ping the enemy. Tip number four, ping the enemies no matter what. Unless you're in solos, but I still recommend pinging. If you're in duo spheres or quads, don't be selfish. Ping the enemies if you get shot by them. Ping them if they're dead, right? If you're down and you see the enemy, ping them. Don't just cry and, and scream about hackers this, hacker that, or just back out. Ping the enemy and let your teammates and help your teammates win the fight. 
Because right now, here we are again with Han in a one solo situation. He's in a 1v whatever because his team just fails to help him be... They fail, they fail to help him win these fights. Now, <laughs> I don't know what the fuck he's doing, bro. <laughs> Han, Han sensitivity, and I run a low DPI in sensitivity, but his shit's so crazy, he can't really control it. You can just see when he's tracking enemies. You can see when he's moving, how he just flicks around and throws random nades. The first nade looked like it was decent. It definitely wouldn't have reached. The second nade, I don't even know where the hell it went. He was all over the place. So ladies and gentlemen, here we are again in a solo situation, spectating this guy. And it's cool that we can slide cancel and do all this shit. But look, again, we need to pay attention to other things. People just think if you have good aim and you can slide cancel, you'll win games and get a lot of kills. It will help you. But if you're not paying attention to the circle and thinking about rotations and where you want to go and how to get your teammates back, you're going to lose all the time. Here we are out in the open with no cover, trying to take on the enemy. And we're absolutely throwing right now, almost into position to being three tapped, finally falling back while plating. I'll give him that. Going prone, using the ridge to his advantage. We're crawling up a little too much while reloading, but it's all right. They weren't focused on us anyway. Not sure why the enemy's teammates not helping. And we have a teammate literally, literally we're shooting at one guy. He got down and the second teammate kept running. He never even tried to help his teammate out. He could have helped. He could have helped the squad mate down us and then res his teammate and gone in and gone on to win the game. But instead they, they lost their teammate. And again, we're not just going to criticize Han and the people we're spectating. We're going to criticize the enemy too. You guys, I want everyone to learn from mistakes of players and themselves. Unfortunately, not everyone has the luxury of learning from their own mistakes because not everybody records their own gameplay, right? They win the game, they lose the game, they move on. That's what this series is for. That's what it's intended for. All right, we do have some bounties, but again, we need to reload while we're ADS. Hell yeah. <laughs> Don't ever do that, guys. There's no reason to ADS on an enemy if you're middle of reload. All you're going to do is hinder your movement speed. And if you have no idea what I'm talking about or referring to, make sure you check out some other videos. I explain all this shit 100,000 times over and over and over again. So we've thrown a few stuns. We've let, allowed enemies to know where we're at, not just the enemy we shot at, but other teams that may be in the area or even as teammates. So it's saying that we're in a position now where we're just pissing off everybody. If we threw those stuns, which I'm, I'm fine with, throw the stuns, get the stuns for sure. But don't put yourself on the backside of the hangar between fire station and the hangar with Cali sticks. You're going to get fucked up, right? You're going to. He's lucky to get third party. That was the whole point of saying that. If, if you're making noise, don't expose yourself. That's what he did. When he put his back towards firehouse, he was just assuming no one's in firehouse. But guess what? People love camping in firehouse. And I'm pretty sure that's what his teammates probably came from as well. We have a UAV up. We've got enemies pinged here. We've got another team over here as well. Let's see what they end up doing and how they actually push this team. Now, when you have a team camping inside a building and multiple of them, um, you, you got to approach the building fast and swift. You don't want to sit here, bust open a door and just kind of sit there and watch. Don't alert the enemy and give him time to outthink you. You want to hit it fast. Why are we heart beating? Why are we heart beating? He's literally on the mini map, fam. Stupid. I'm sorry. Again, I'm heated. Heart beating when you have a UAV up is the most idiotic shit you can do in Warzone. If you're doing it, stop. We have two teammates uh, towards the buy station in front of us by the police station. We knew that based on the information we were just given. He also bought a teammate back, so be aware of that. You don't get dropped on and, and meleeed to death. I've right, got some pings going out. Not really sure what we're pinging, to be honest. He keeps saying danger, danger, but no one's here. I don't blame him for the heartbeat on that one because his teammate's pinging everything in the sky. Let's go ahead and move off this guy. He clearly just wants to loot money all damn day. Again, guys, this is not a looter shooter. This is a battle royale. Loot's there to help you get your shit and move on. In other battle royales like PUBG or Fortnite, yeah, you had to loot and you just had to because you needed to get shit. You didn't have loadouts and shit like that. Warzone does. That's the whole purpose of loadout. So you don't have to keep picking up random shit throughout the game. You don't have to worry about it. Now here we have green in the middle of a fight. No pings going out again. No idea what he's shooting at, where his teammates are. Oh, there we go. All right, here we are moving up. Very ballsy move right now. Well, Green needs to put himself in a position where he can suppress the enemies and protect us coming up the ladder. The last thing he needs to do. Oh my God. Yep, that's all she wrote. Oh, that's fucking cheap. That's Ravensoft. You got to do better than that one, bro. You got to do better than that. 
that poor bastard. I'm, I'm not even mad. I'm not even mad that he came up there. He probably shouldn't have at all, but eh, he got screwed on that one. It is what it is. I love the bouncing Bettys. Literally sitting on the loadout. Wow. And again, rotations and, and, and judging where the circle's going is one of the most important features in winning the game. You don't need to do it to get kills. You, you just go to where you think enemies are at and chase down UAVs and bounties. That's pretty self-explanatory at this point. If you're going for wins, though. You, you got you to gotta go ahead and start paying attention to shit like this, right? This is where you're going to want to be at. This is where you're going to want to start working your way to. You don't want to play on the edge right here because if we stay on this bullshit of playing the edge of airport and we play the edge all the way up to here, we're going to get screwed up from all these people that are already pre-rotated sitting in these compounds. They'll have the high ground on us and they'll just shoot down on us while we're out in the open. And we're trying to gatekeep right now. We're trying to, I guess, it looked like we we're trying to gatekeep Boneyard. Not a fan of that at all. Definitely move yourself to the corner and then wait for the gatekeep. You want to close the gap as much as possible because that is a, that is a hell of a range for the gun we have in our hand. Standing on the ledge, very exposed to Chrono eight shot. Don't do this either, guys. Again, not really a fan of going for this kill at this range. He got lucky that Chrono eight missed. Tip number five, if you guys are sitting on ledges like this, make sure you're moving, jumping on and off the ledge. Make sure you're keeping your head moving so you're not vulnerable. Us just sitting here and focusing on one target it's just going to open us up to getting headshotted. Now we have a teammate down from a cluster strike. He gets executed is what it is. And now again, we're playing the edge of the circle. So we're going to be forced to jump off the roof and we're going to be very vulnerable. And now we go down with the precision. Unfortunately, teammate cannot save us. You're on your own, brother. That's what you get for playing the edge. Now, again, if they weren't playing the edge and we would have went down, guess what would have happened? Oh, we didn't have to worry about the gas. Our teammate could have come res us but because our teammate doesn't have a gas mask. He can't come in the gas to res us. So again, stop playing the edge of the circle. If you're playing aggressive and you're doing like a pinwheel motion and you're and you're going for kills, that's fine. But if you're going to be camping or playing passive and scared, don't play the edge of the circles. It's not going to work out for you much. All right, but here we have a team. Uh, they're not really in a, in a great position either, though. I'm going to be honest. This is a long track. This is a long hike with no cover. They got a little bit of concealment here and there. They got this cluster of rocks. But after that, it's just angled mountain with some trees, and that's it. Not to mention, again, the things I'm worried about since we took so long to get here, no matter what team we're spectating, is the team that's camping here and here, and people have already positioned themselves on this hill for the win. This will be the win spot for sure. Another teammate going down, no pings given out, none at all. Look, guys, if you're in the position of uh, blue right now and you got sniped, you have this thing that pops up on the screen called a hit indicator. Just ping, pull up your map and mark where you think it came from. Even if it's not exactly, just mark it and be like, hey, bro, somewhere around here. Look, look how many of us right now, our teammates laying down on our right, prone, vulnerable to headshot. We're all doing the same thing. And we just keep getting picked one by one. And yet these guys are probably wondering like, how are they hitting their shots? Because you're sitting perfectly still with your head exposed and a bunch of glints aiming at enemies. They all, they know where you're all at. Not to mention, we're not in a position right now to be picking fights because we need to move to safety. Circle's coming in. Look how much cover we do not have and how vulnerable how vulnerable we are on this hill. And we're lucky. We're so lucky no one's in this house in front of us. We are so lucky. I may be speaking too soon. You know, there may be a camper in there. But I would hope that if someone was in there, they'd be picking that window and taking us out. Again, if this lobby was if this lobby was filled with players who knew what they were doing, there would be a team here right now, gatekeeping everybody. But there is a team in there playing scared. Wow. <laughs> Again, the guy that's in this building, the guy we just picked up on heartbeat, should have been shooting at us from the window. He should have had four easy kills, but because he got scared, but because he got scared and he played like that, they're going to end up dying, possibly. They run the risk of dying, I should say. All right, there it is. They're finally wiped. Now we're spectating. We got a... Uh, we got three more teams left. There's a 4v8 situation. We are one of the few teams of the full squad, and all we got to do is pick them off right now. Nice headshot. I love the hit marker. <laughs> uh, we got to be watching this ridge, too. No one no one in the squad has watched this ridge. If you look over there, you can you notice it's a little point. It's a nice place to head glitch. We're just assuming no one's there. And based on the fact that the guys in this building didn't even shoot at us, there might not be people on the hill, but again, it's something you need to look for. You guys need to start playing as if your enemies around you. What would you do if you were on the hill? What would you do if you were in the building and start capitalizing and moving off that knowledge? 
Play like the enemies you're playing against are extremely better than you. Don't assume their shit, no matter what lobby you're in. Always play on your toes. Here we are with a quick heartbeat. I'll give him that. I don't mind that at all. Dropping plates for our teammates. Gang, gang. Y'all need a lot more plates, boys. Y'all are hurting for escorting, my dudes. And right now, we're exposed as shit. I'd be playing these trees, sitting back a little bit on the ridges like we are right now. You don't want to sit here and face check the... F you don't want to sit here and face check a uh, police station at all. It's a, f it's a 4v2, so it's a 4v1v1. We should win this game, but I've seen teams throw worse than this. So let's just let's just buckle up. We may be in for a treat. We've got one guy below us for sure. I would not go all Rambo on him one at a time. If you all four want to go down there and take him out, that's fine. You got the chance to do it now. But if Dunn goes down there by himself and tries to get the kill by himself, which he's not, and he gets picked, then it's a 1v3. And the next guy jumps down, then it's a 1v2. Look at this guy laying prone with the glint. He takes us out. Wow. He's going to die. He's laying prone in the, in the open with no cover. There it is. GG. Look, Wolfpack, I really hope you enjoyed the video. Again, the purpose of this is just to go ahead and just uh, constructive criticism. You know, <laughs> I make videos and I give the best advice I possibly can from the four years of Battle Royale knowledge and the 5,000 plus wins I've gotten throughout all those ba Battle Royales. And I try to give that to you guys so you guys can get better, go out there and have a little bit more fun. I'm not trying to make everybody a pro, but just give everyone a little bit of common sense tips so y'all can improve your gameplay consistently. It's fun to watch people drop 30, 40 kills for sure, but it's hard to really put yourselves in their shoes and understand the mindset of a player like that. At least with this series, we can get you guys to stop making the same fatal mistakes that you guys may make on a daily basis. But again, hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, leave a like, subscribe, and as always, you have a good one and good luck in Warzone. Don't do this shit here.